Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 6th of October 2024. We're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 4th of October. Gold consolidated a little last week while silver continued its advance. In sterling and euro terms, gold and silver rose substantially due to the strength of the US dollar compared to the weakness of those currencies. What happened and what can we look forward to this coming week? Well, let's take a look. Now first, just a quick reminder, we've set up a second channel entitled Finances Do Matter covering a whole array of financial topics. We've placed a link in the description box and comment section below for those who have not as yet joined that channel. Gold fell $6 last week, falling from $2,660 to $2,654, having hit a high of $2,673 and a low of $2,625, a fall of 0.2%. Gold spread between high and low was just $48. Last weekend we said gold would trade between $26 and $2,700, which it did very comfortably. In sterling terms, gold rose £35, closing at £2,024, and in euros it rose €38, euros, closing at €2,421. Silver rose 63 cents, rising from $31.64 to $32.27. Did actually get as high as 33.06, so breached that important $33 level, watch it closely, and a low of $30.93, a rise of 2%. The difference between its high and low was $2.13. Last weekend we predicted silver would trade between $30.75 and $33 and could attempt to reach an outlier of up to $33.50. Again though it did this range comfortably and closed within our original forecast. In sterling terms it's up 92 pence at 24 pounds and 61 pence and in euros it closed at 29.43 euros that's up 1.04 euros. Obviously, with silver advancing and gold falling, the gold to silver ratio went down from 84 to 1 to 82.2 to 1. Bitcoin's currently standing at $62,037, down $3,653. US equities were slightly higher, not much really to talk home about. Dow Jones up 39 at 42,352. The S&P 500 up 13 at 5,751. The Nasdaq up 18 at 18,137. However, the UK FTSE 100 index was down 40 points at 8,280. Oils were considerably high due to the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. Brent crude closed at $78.05, that's up $6.07. And WTI crude closed at $74.38 at $6.20. For those wanting to see inflation falling, we don't want to see oil prices rising. The dollar index stands up 2.14 points, quite a jump, at 102.52. Now last week we stated there were a few days where relevant US economic data was being announced, but the most important day would be Friday, where the US non-farm payrolls report for September was being revealed with forecasters predicting somewhere between 144,000 and 150,000 new jobs. The reality was 254,000 new jobs. And the July and August figures were also elevated. In addition, the unemployment rate fell from 4.2 to 4.1%. This suggested the Fed may be slightly more cautious now with interest rate cuts, which may prove difficult as the UK and Europe have suggested they will be more aggressive on rate cuts, which is why we saw the US dollar strengthen so considerably. The ADP employment report published Wednesday also showed higher rates for September coming in at 143,000 new jobs compared with 103,000 the previous month. Manufacturing and services PMIs were broadly as anticipated. This coming week we have statements made by a number of Fed officials and the minutes from the last FOMC meeting being revealed on Wednesday. All eyes once again though will be on the CPI or inflation report on Thursday where the year of year CPI is expected to fall from 2.5% to 2.3% and the year of year core CPI to hold 
at 3.2. Clearly, if oil prices remain high or go even higher, these figures won't look quite so good next month. Finally, on Friday, we have the PPI figures, which also should not be ignored, as they do give us a trend line for future inflation rates. We stated last week the short-term outlook is indeed positive for gold, even though some investors may take profits. Geopolitics and the prospects of lower rates ahead will ensure gold and silver will remain propped up and have further to advance. There is no doubt, though, that Friday's job report reduced hopes for a larger rate cut by the Federal Reserve at its next policy meeting in November. Traders slashed the odds of a 50 basis point rate cut, which dropped from 28% to 6% after the report was published, though we never felt the next rate would be that high anyway. Fed Chair Jerome Powell had already indicated that the pace of rate cuts would slow, reinforcing market expectations for a 25 basis point cut. With inflation still above the Fed's target and the labour market showing resilience, the pressure for aggressive rate cuts has eased, further weighing on gold. Now, even though tensions in the Middle East provide some comfort for elevated gold prices, analysts are asking, is this enough to prevent a slight decline of the next few weeks? And the consensus is that gold could dip back to 2,616 or possibly as low as $2,578. If this did happen, it's no great shakes, as so we're only talking about a potential decline of around $76 to $80. A little consolidation, in our view, would be no bad thing, as analysts are predicting a breakout closer towards the end of the year. Silver analysts, though, are quite excited at the moment, as silver normally exceeds gold's rise in a bullish market and could indeed add another 10 to 20% growth in its price before the year end. This could mean, in our view, silver reaching $35 or even $38. Some pundits are forecasting $45 to $50, but we believe this is too optimistic for 2024. You see, the excitement's been caused by China's stimulus measures just announced, which would rapidly increase the demand for silver, and Saxo Bank is predicting $40 silver before the year is out. A stronger economy certainly favours silver, and geopolitical tensions favour gold. However, if they lead to higher oil prices and therefore inflation, interest rates will not fall as rapidly as many hope for, which will weigh down on their price. So it's never a linear equation. We do buy the argument that silver may outperform gold a little more, but both have had a considerable run, with gold rising 46% over the last 12 months and silver 49%, far better than the equity markets. So taking all of this into account, we forecast... Gold to be similar to last week, where it will trade somewhere between 2,600 and 2,700, with 2,575 and 2,725 as outliers. And silver to trade between 31 and 33.50, with $30.50 to 34 as outliers. What do you think? As always, please share your thoughts. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. We'd appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, Press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they appear. And all that remains, as it's coming to the end of the weekend, is to wish you a most prosperous week ahead.